uh, in order to listen to this, uh, sorry, in order to benefit all mother sentient beings as vast as infinite space, this infinite sky, please um, listen to the holy dharma with the motivation to attain the supreme awakened state of perfect Buddhahood. And what is the dharma which we'll be listening to and discussing today? It is within the Lam Rim, Lam Rim Chenmo, continuing off where we stopped last week, where we got to out of these uh, three parts of the outline with a section in serenity that we're in. And we, we are now in the section that's the third of them, which is uh, what to do after focusing your mind on the object. So that's we'll, where we will begin today. Nibo <laughs> あの、シシンギ、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君、君
vigilance, uh, uh, one sometimes called introspection, sometimes called vigilance. And so now where, where we come to here, um, and then to antidote, I'm sorry, and so antidote losing the uh, object with mindfulness and antidote laxity and excitement with vigilance. And so in order to do that, then we have to recognize what exactly are laxity and excitement. So that's what this section begins with, identifying laxity and excitement. So first it begins actually with excitement. And uh, let's look at the phrasing that Genla used. So he begins, Tsongkhapa begins in this section with a quote from Asanga in the Compendium of Knowledge. And he describes this excitement through just talking about these three qualities or characteristics. Um, so it says there are three aspects to this definition. Uh, here we are on the page 58 of the text. One, its object is an attractive and pleasant one. Two, its subjective aspect is that your mind is unquiet and scattered outward. As a derivative of attachment, it engages its object with a sense of craving. Three, its function is to impede stabilization of your mind on its object. So here we have these three aspects, these three characteristics, and let's take them one by one. Um, so first of all, this is something just before we get, uh, get into that, it's, this is a mental factor or mental process that is sort of under the control of desire, a desirous attachment. So this is something that by the power of attachment, it uh, goes away from your chosen object of meditation, your focus, the focal object, and it brings the mind to something else. That's like the defining uh, nature of its excitement. Then looking at each of these three individually. So first we have its object, right? What is the object of excitement? It's uh, something which appears attractive. It's something that it seems pleasant, but in being attractive, it's not necessarily actually attractive. It's something which the mind first attributes attractiveness to or imputes attractiveness to, and then has desire for it. And the mind gets scattered outward towards that object. And then uh, we have the uh, subjective aspect. So this is the mind being unquiet or unpeaceful and scattered out, outward. And, and again, what is it scattered towards those different objects? We can say in summary, it's the five objects of the senses, visual forms, sounds, smells, tastes, and tangible objects or tactile sensations. So those are the five, uh, we call the five desire objects, five objects of desire, or the five sense objects. And so that's, uh, then we come to the third one, which is the function. The third characteristic in this explanation talks about what this excitement does and it impedes stabilization of your mind on its object. So it's an obstacle to the mind abiding on the object. Now, laxity is an obstacle to the mind having a clear appearance of the object, right? It's an obstacle to the clear appearance uh, aspect that we're trying to cultivate in serenity, whereas excitement is an obstacle to the single-pointed abiding aspect. Simdita Dam 
So we we'll continue uh, down reading in the text where we have the next paragraph. When your attention is inwardly fixed upon its object, excitement, which is attached to form, sound, and so on, pulls your attention helplessly toward these objects and causes distraction. As it says in Chandra Goman's Praise of Confession, just as you are focused on meditative serenity, directing your attention toward it again and again, the noose of the afflictions pulls your attention helplessly with the rope of attachment to objects. So this further is continuing to identify and elucidate the nature of this excitement. So it's this force, this mental process, which pulls the mind, scatters the mind away from your chosen object and outwards towards something else. It distracts, it's distracting the mind outwards. And towards what kinds of things? It's distracting towards objects like form, sound, and so on. Again, the five sense objects. It could be sometimes any type of attractive visual form, pleasant sound, any kind of smell, tastes, or tangible tactile sensations. So the way it works is, as Chandra Goman says in this verse, as well as Tsongkhapa, is that it pulls your attention helplessly. So it's like the attachment is in control and you have no control. Helplessly with the rope of attachment to objects. So that's, that's why this excitement, it's a kind of attachment. It's a subset of attachment. So it's the force of attachment that pulls your mind, it tugs your mind with, uh, with its rope outwards towards these objects. And it's what happens when we go to meditate, we start to see this happening. It's, a, it's an issue when we go to meditate. Without meditating, it's maybe not such a, so, such a big issue that we uh, acknowledge as an issue, but when we are trying to meditate, so it says, you know, just as you are focused on meditative serenity, directing your attention toward it again and again. So at that at that point, then uh, your attention gets pulled by this excitement. Oh yeah, that Dojagi and 
Reading on question is there is it excitement when there is scattering in which other afflictions distract your mind away from the object or for that matter when there is scattering toward other virtuous objects reply excitement is a derivative of, of attachment so being distracted by other afflictions is not excitement rather it is the mental process of distraction which is one of the 20 secondary afflictions. Scattering toward virtuous objects may involve any virtuous mind or mental process. So not all scattering is excitement. So this is something that we did briefly discuss last class and in previous classes before that as well. And here it's really kind of making the decisive statement by Jabin Buche uh, where he's answering this uh, very clearly so that it, there's no longer any doubt to the question of if some other factor besides attachment pulls your mind, scatters the mind outwards, then is that also excitement? And the answer is no. It, it is not also excitement because excitement is something which is necessarily caused by attachment or and, and is a, a branch or a, a subset of attachment. And just to comment on a couple of terms to help clarify what's being said here. Scattering, another way, word you, you could use for that is mind wandering. Uh, that's more of the contemporary term they use in cognitive science, mind wandering. And then also when we talk about mental processes here, that's another term for the mental factors when we discuss the main minds versus mental factors. So that's just a synonym for mental factors. So what happens is that you can have distraction where your mind is scattered or you have mind wandering towards an object that you're angry at, person or object that you're angry at, or it could even be towards a virtuous object. So when the mind is going out towards one of those things, it is a type of distraction. There is mind wandering or scattering, but that's not what we would consider excitement. So even if you're if you're in meditation and then you start to think, how wonderful would it be if all sentient beings had happiness and its causes, then that's towards an object, a focal object of loving kindness. Or if you start to think, may all sentient beings, or how wonderful would it be if all sentient beings were free of suffering and its causes, then you have a distraction towards a, a focal object of compassion. So those are. Yes, they are distractions. Yes, they are factors that need to be addressed and counteracted, but it's not the excitement that is being discussed here. Mm -hmm. 
我的情况我的情况我的情况我的情况我的情况我的情况我的情况我的情况我的情况我的情况我的情况我的情况我的情况我的情况我的情况我的情况我的情况我的情况我的情况我的情况我的情况我的情况我的情况我的情况我的情况
la gewan yan chuwe nyumong je mangi su ta digar su ngor sna ta chingwa de la tin ta pyo ki ta kheba ngama pyo khang jin ki ta kheba ngama ka shi ki de shi jam dong de su nor ba yu du kan sna sim yu shi la tin to me ba ne shi ki ni chi ro de to me ba ne shi an zin se dang me ba ro se nang me be tin mu bi cha ji la ro an chingwa su sha di be tin ding min du us ka sna gom bim ta ji ro be kamal shi le ji gom lim dang ki du ani jumne de ki ji do de gong de dang ji ru du pa ba tong me ji ju gong de dang ji ru du us kan ri sna ta shun konan su da ja ga shun ce deng ti de nang na qing wa da mu ba de ji de lu ga tong du as kan ti ji nang ge ta de da ti de ji ja dang de ani sim chi ru chu a me ba san nang me bi mu ba ji da xia wa yi na ti mu ba di qing wa ge ge ju le si ka sna mu ba si de ani qing wa ge ju le chu a mu ba dang qing wa ni ani be ji ju dang mo dang chi le be mi da re si ka sna be na de da de le song a ru wa mu ba si de de ni ka ri le o ani ji a ne ti mu la de ne wa ti mu ge cha do dong chi ti mu da ti mu ge cha do dong chi de ni an lu sim mi ban de ni ka sna lu sim rang do bu le su mu ru wa su ge ge sim jung ju la mu ba si wo de ta mu ba de la de ne ge bi ani ka sna mi nam se se nang de ma tu ge ge ni sim jung ju la qing wa si wo de du zan ni mu ba da qing wa ni ani du yan lo re si ka sna ma qing wa de mu ba la de ne ge mu ba de ti mu la de ne ge wa ma du ti mu ge wo su ge bi qing wa de ma re si Ini tu jadi, tak mubah sih tu dah, malah tu ni dah. Ani kata dia, oh, dia dia kasih nanti, ngaji sem nang tu di, nanti kasih nanti sem naja tu suh cewa tu. Dia dia latihan kegua orang as, dah, ah kasih nanti cewa kaya di. Mubah di, kasih nanti mubi cerai di kasih nanti, lu dah sem, ane ber lesu murung as nanti, kiri cula kul nang kul mutu as nanti, cakeng di nanti cerai cingin di mubah di. Cuma sih nanti, tiga jesu di nanti sih nih. Ani kasna mi ba se nang tu ma tu ni sim jun ji la chi wo de es ta ti in ba di gong ri nang la yang de ni kasna sim chi nong chi du to ba na si ni da mu ba mu ba da ni gi nu ni sim chi wo de es de ani mu ba da ni la de ni sim ke kasna chi wo ke wo de es de ani chi wo da mu ba ni lu ga yin ba pe gong ri nang la du su ni pe ka ma lu pe ka shi ka shi se wo shi wo su du as ta na shi du de gong ri nang la Mubah dan ni ki cheng wa mu nyong ba ju bi nye bi nyong mo ba kanyo rung wa nyong ba nang do sem na mye yu nyong wo sem ke je shi e du ta do re su du na ane mubah dan ni ki ju la te ne chung jo ki se ne cheng wa se di shi e du ta cheng wa dan mubah ni bet kwa dan lo ga yin ba di ta ti ka se wo du ta na shi kun ju nang la yang cheng wa nye nyong ki na mye ki kap su shi e mye kyang te shi bi na mye la ge wa yang chung wa yang nyong mo nje mang e su wo se du za ne ta ji Cheng wa di ane ka sna ji ma de shi jia bing du ne ka bi na ming ge ka su de shi jia bing du yin na dan a ti la tin ge wa yang yu zhang ti tin ni mo jing ge tin ni na ming dang gu ni ane cheng wa di lo su da ge da ji xia hu de da na ming se de da ta ge kong du a ka de de gu bi ge du le yong du a do lu su de na da pyo ge da ke ba ngam ma ge tin ni o tin ni mu ba da cheng wa ni ji du xia ni de shi jia he di da ti nor wa de xia as da ka sna ya xiong ce de Ani kung lo be kamal shi bi shun pa ba tong mi ki shun dan gegi du ane jom nende ki do de gong de wo tini gegi du sa ta do ru su du na ta ngaran zu du sa mo ta yun du ngaya qing wa si du pe na gom jiao du qing wa ta mu ba ni ka ga da ga wo de yin na qing wa di ka si na mi ba di se nang da di ka si na se nang du ma la ge chi ge se nang se nang qing ma tu ging ge a ta si yi na qing wa ra ba Senang yue jang senang yue ngar mea ba yina chen wang chamu le skazin shu yun ba Wo ti na yinde tim de jigi che le jire Mu ba se di lu sim le su miru ba Se di ta Ti mu Ti ni ka sna O ne ti ni ka sna ni dang tim zo la te ne Mu ba ke Mu ba la te ne ching wa ke Ching wei ki ti ni Sim mi ba sanang te ba la gek che wa So da du che ni ti ni Pang lim ju yue zang Ani ching wa di Mu ba le lo su re So da di te shi di Lung yu kung da che ba yung su ma re So di ni su And now we'll continue reading. As for its definition, most yogis among these snowy peaks seem to consider laxity to be a lethargic state of mind that stays on its object of meditation without scattering elsewhere, but lacks limpid clarity. This is incorrect, for lethargy is said to cause laxity, so the two are distinct, as suggested in Kamala Shila's second stages of meditation. If being oppressed by lethargy and sleepiness, you see your mind in 
seeking to become lax or in danger. The end meaning says, if there is laxity due to lethargy and sleepiness, or if you are afflicted by any secondary afflictions in meditative absorption, it is a case of internal mental, mental distraction. Uh, this states that when your mind becomes lax due to lethargy and sleepiness, it is distracted inwardly. The Sangha's Compendium of Knowledge also discusses laxity in the context of the secondary affliction of distraction. But distraction, as he explains it, may also be virtuous, though it is not necessarily afflictive. So when we look at le this laxity, it seems like there were previous scholars and yogis of Tibet who had a slight error in their explanation or understanding. And what that error was, was to conflate laxity with what again here is being called lethargy. So saying that lethargy and laxity are the same thing. So, so here, Jeremy Puche is giving a clear distinction, making, making it clear that these two are distinct. And lethargy, um, yeah, that is, an, is another one of those terms that can have several different renderings in English, but we'll just, just so you know, you'll see it come up with other terms, <laughs> but here we have le le lethargy. And so what is Jeremy Puche say, saying the main thing is that how we know they're distinct is because that's what's said in the valid authoritative Indian treatises, especially he's citing Kamala Shila's second stages of meditation. He's citing the actual sutra from Shakyamuni Buddha, the sutra unraveling the intended meaning, as well as Asanga's compendium of knowledge. So this view that laxity is the same as lethargy is counter uh, contradicted by these authoritative treatises. And what do those treatises say is essentially that laxity is actually a result of lethargy. Lethargy is a cause of laxity. So they can't be the same thing. So what's the difference in their effect? What's the difference in their function? What's the difference in their causes? Well, they have differences in both of them. So the basic function First of all, like the, I guess you could say the stages or the process would be the mind, even though it's not moving outwards towards external objects, but it's actually sort of being too, almost like you could say being distracted inward by being too inwardly focused, too, too inwardly focused. Um, then the, uh, this is a kind of, you know, darker, foggier state of mind. And so some would call that laxity some, and also lethargy. But when we get more specific and precise about what's happening, we see there's sort of stages to this process. So we actually now break it up into three different mental factors, mental processes. So we have laxity, lethargy, and then one of the three root poisons, which, um, what do we call that in English now? Attachment, aversion, and I don't want to say ignorance because it's a different word than ignorance. Someone want to help me here? <laughs> it's um, um, delusion. Delusion. Thank you. Ah, yeah, perfect. Thank you, Carmela. So delusion. So that's actually now coming into play because uh, here delusion is the cause of the lethargy and the lethargy is the cause of the laxity and they're all and the, another difference is this lethargy is necessarily this a kind of afflicted um uh mental process that is an at, an aspect or within the, is, is a subset within the category of delusion and what that does is it functions to make the body and mind unserviceable or unworkable. So not following and acting as you would wish them to. And so, <clears throat> so it's like when, when the mind uh, has this 
quality of abiding on the object, but it that gets too strong, then the energy of the mind lowers. And so you have this kind of um, this kind of lethargy. And you can see that in the text here, it's talking about a sort of process of cause, uh, causal process, as Kamala Shiva says, if being oppressed by lethargy and sleepiness, you see your mind becoming lax. So that's showing that they're not the same thing. There's a causal order in there. And then the Sutra Unraveling the Intended Meaning says a similar thing. If there is laxity due to lethargy and sleepiness. So again, it's saying that the lethargy comes first, the laxity comes after. So the lethargy is coming from the delusion and it's sort of necessarily a, an aspect of this delusion, but the laxity itself is coming after that. And it's different, in, the, the difference in function is that the lethargy is making the body and mind unworkable. Whereas the laxity is simply that aspect, that mental process which obstructs the object appearing clearly, right? With whether you're talking about subtle laxity or you're talking about coarse laxity. So the coarse laxity completely obstructs the object appearing clearly at all. The subtle laxity obstructs the object from appearing clearly with that vivid intensity there. So either way, they have it has a different function than the lethargy, which makes your body and mind unworkable, not following uh, in in line with your uh, intended goal or your in, uh, your wish for how you want to use your body and mind. So. ตัดดินตัดดีฮอลาดัดตัดกิมุบบากิกอติตายกิกังจวนนิชิตัดเจชิริตินะเทนะมุบบานิสกุเลตุบาเลมุบบาคังชินะติมุกิชัลตุบิ
Kan man mail med mig i bed i godsomasson? Ah. Mail ser en Alle den der de mail er bedre end de. Det er mukbase jorva. Det er chancen nu muba. Det kan ikke tro til det. Så den dækker sådan. Der lyder sådan nogle nu bor chava ina. De nægter den at tage nu tinger han så nu må han da da så nu da tog da nu 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 lader soba. Det er så mere nogle bare chow chow rauji kita tjenge sugare spedi jar da mere. Muba det. Så nu da det er så tradition jo ena. Da går chow så nu bare chow chow rauji kita man lærer jo. Og det er mere bedre end det der tinger rauji. Muk muba det jo. Da. So we're continuing to read down in the text. Of lethargy then, Asanga's compendium of knowledge says, what is lethargy? An unservice, unserviceable state of mind classified as a derivative of delusion. It works to assist all root afflictions and secondary afflictions. So this derivative of delusion is the heaviness and unserviceability of body and mind. Basu Bandhu's treasury, treasury of Knowledge auto commentary says, what is lethargy? The heaviness of the body and the heaviness of the mind, which are the unserviceability of the body and the unserviceability of the mind. Laxity means your mind's way of every, oh, okay, so I was just to there. So here again, we have it more clearly explained this distinction between laxity and lethargy. And now of course the word delusion comes right in the text. <laughs> Someone was reading very well. And so we have an explanation of this lethargy as being a derivative of delusion. It also works to its function. It works to assist all, state, uh, all root afflictions and secondary afflictions. So what is this kind of lethargy, this kind of delusion? We have the word mukpa in both, both of the Sanskrit words. There's this sense of muk, the, the lethargy itself is mukpa and then delusion is timuk. So it's something very close. Uh, and it's a kind of darkness of mind. That's the main idea, a kind of unclarity, fogginess, darkness of mind. And so when we talk about this delusion, it's really preventing a person, preventing, uh, pre preventing us from focusing on a virtuous object at all. It's like it blocks us from even thinking about something virtuous. And it acts uh, to assist all root and secondary afflictions. And how does it do that? Well, Again, this is lethargy now, not, not delusion. So lethargy does this because it's using an example. It's like having a bunch of very flammable pile of very flammable dry material where just a little spark of flame will burn it all up. So lethargy is sort of like that. We have all of these uh, seeds of the other afflictions, the six root afflictions, the 20 secondary afflictions. And what, as soon as lethargy is present, then all of these others can just spark and fire and, and, and become uh, like a flame and burn. So, so uh, when we talk about laxity, on the other hand, it's not necessarily something that would assist all the root afflictions and secondary afflictions to arise. And again, why is that? Because we can have laxity where it's still focused on a virtuous object. So that is a, a distinction here. We can have laxity present, which is yes, an obstacle that needs to be addressed, that needs to be overcome, but it can be focused on something virtuous. Whereas lethargy actually prevents the mind from even going towards or focusing on a virtuous object. <clears throat> Chimwan 
In this next section, laxity means that your mind's way of apprehending the object of meditation is slack, and it does not apprehend the object with much vividness or firmness. So even if it is limpid, if your mind's way of apprehending the object is not highly vivid, then laxity has set in. Kamala Shila's second stages of meditation states, when your mind does not see the object vividly, like a person born blind or a person entering a dark place, or like having one's eyes shut, then recognize that your mind has become lax. I have not seen a clear presentation of the definition of laxity in the other classic texts. So this is using as the main source, the Kamala, Kamala Shila's middling stages of meditation or second stages of meditation. And so he's describing the first uh, Tsongkhapa is talking about both subtle and coarse laxity. He is um, saying that, first of all, the mind's way of apprehending the object is black. There's not much vividness or firmness, but even if it is limpid, um, when your apprehension is not highly vivid. So this is the subtle laxity where there's some limpidity, some it's called that clarity. There's some clarity, but just not that intense vividness, highly vivid. Then this is subtle laxity. Then coarse laxity would be, which isn't uh, really explicitly in this section, but we did go over that previously. The coarse laxity is where if you're focusing on something and it's, um, I'm sorry, yeah, so that would be in the first line here, that would be referring to the coarse laxity. It does not apprehend the object with much vividness or firmness. So here, the, the mind is very loose. It's very slack. And if you're focusing on something like Shakyamuni Buddha's body, the, the body of the Buddha, then there's all the different parts of the Buddha's body, and they're all fuzzy, and the, the, none of them are appearing clearly. This is the coarse kind of laxity. And the examples Kamala Shila gives here 
it's like being a blind person or being in a dark room. So it's really like there's some, it's really like you're in a dark place and you just can't see clearly. You can't see the object that's there. Uh, or it's like having your eyes closed. You go to meditate, go to focus on the object and it's, it's as if your eyes are closed. You can't see anything clearly. There's, it's like there's nothing you can really grasp or nothing you can really fully like identify um, with this kind of laxity present. And again, it's different from this uh, factor, this mental process of lethargy, which is really what makes the mind and body unserviceable, unworkable. It makes them... Um, uh, yeah, I can't, the exact term that again I used is a little different from those two terms, but fortunately I can't think of a good English uh, for it, but something of that idea, something where the mind is just, you know, it's too, um, not you're not able to do with it what you want. It's groggy, you could say maybe, groggy and unworkable. Okay, uh, then uh, this again uh, is using the Kamala Sheila's text, because as J. Rinpoche says, there isn't another text in the classic authoritative Indian treatises, which gives a clear explanation of it. So he's just using the source of Kamala Sheila and uh, for his source on the description of laxity and leaving it there. That's uh, exactly how uh, the takeaway we should have is exactly as it is in Kamala Sheila's text. What 路子當那羅胖馬魯索瓦那麼拉甘尼斯米巴薩瓦當金當金金家尼加格吉斯與薩瓦藏當與金吉當家那那藏金米索古斯他他金瓦地他我讓著他心那拉杜金達米那麼
Okay, so we'll read um, the next part of the text. Laxity may be virtuous or ethically neutral, whereas lethargy is either a virtuous or ethically neutral mental obstruction, and it is invariably a derivative of delusion. Moreover, the classic texts say that to dispel laxity, you must bring to mind pleasant objects, such as the body of the Buddha, or meditate on light so as to stimulate your mind. Therefore, you have to stop the object from appearing unclearly, as though darkness were descending on your mind. And you have to put an end to the quality of attention which has become flaccid. You need both a clear object of meditation and a tight way of apprehending the object. Neither a clear object alone nor transparency of the subject alone is enough. So here now we're starting to talk about, Lord Tsongkhapa is talking about the ways to overcome laxity when it arises, ways to dispel laxity. And so the way to do that is when the mind is again losing its clarity, the this subjective aspect of clarity is not present. What needs to happen? You need to do something to lift up your mind. So before we were talking about this, how laxity also is sometimes talk, uh, described as slackness, but another sort of English rendering for that shumba could be sort of the the being weighed down. So. So when the mind has lacks these weighed down, so you need to raise it up. You need to lift up the mind or inspire the mind. And what's the way to do that is to think about a joyful object. Think about a pleasant object like the Buddha, like the qualities of the body, speech, and mind of the Buddha. And then the, that will help to overcome the laxity, which has this nature of being depressed, slack, weighed down. Again, using that in the sense, not like emotional depression, but just way down as if there's darkness, right? It's as if you're in a dark room. So what's another thing to do? So when this kind of laxity is present, the advice here is to not immediately stop the meditation and get up right away, but to try and apply some kind of antidote uh, to overcome it. And so, so thinking of something like the, the Buddhist qualities is one uh, or other objects that make the mind joyful and lift it up. Another is advised here, which is to meditate on white light. So here it says meditate on light. And again, that said is so what you would do is meditate a white light at your heart area, center of your chest, and then meditate that the light is literally rising up and merging with the sky and filling the entire sky above you, which is this kind of nature of your mind. And so you have this very bright and very, you know, uh, a clear and bright sense of your mind being full and, and open as like the whole sky. And so that's uh, what meditate on light means. 
this <clears throat> this uh, after doing those kinds of practices, if your um, mind still is lacking this aspect of mental clarity and it, the, meaning the laxity is still present after trying those methods at that point, then as, <clears throat> um, what does it say? Oh, okay, it's not actually, yeah, not in this paragraph, but then what you would do is at that point, then instead of just insisting, you know, and pushing or forcing yourself to just sit there in the meditation, then you can uh, pause the meditation uh, and get up and do other methods, uh, do other virtuous things, read uh, Dharma books, read texts, and of course you can walk and drink water and other things that help dispel this darkness of mind, this laxity. And so in this section of the text, uh, ways to dispel subtle and coarse laxity are clearly stated. Uh, ways to dispel subtle and coarse excitement are not stated right here, but just to review them, uh, what we can do when, again, first of all, what are subtle and coarse excitement? So the coarse excitement is where the mind is not able to remain on the object ever. And then the subtle excitement is where the mind is abiding on the object, but not 
in a stable and strong way. That's the course, the course excitement. So the, the way uh, that laxity works is that the mind gets too loose, too slack, gets pulled downwards. So the way to overcome that was to uplift the mind, right? Do something to, to raise uh, the energy of the mind. Now here in excitement, the mind is too energetic or too, too wild. So what we have to do is do something to lower the energy of the mind, to bring it down. So what are ways to do that? The antidotes would be to think about the suffering of samsara, think about dukkha, think about the suffering of the hell realms, the lower realms, think about illness, different problems that come and oh, how terrible those are when those come and how I, I don't want those things that make your mind, you can say sober, right? That things that sober your mind. So all those are ways to help lower the energy of the mind so that you can focus on your chosen object, your focal object. If those types of thoughts or meditations don't work, then another thing that you should try is meditation on your breath. So here you watch, you observe your breath. Here it is on the inhalation coming in and the exhalation going out. Here's the inhalation coming in, the exhalation going out. And as you do this, you can count them. One, two, and counting 10, 12, and going up to 21. So you count your breaths coming in, the inhalation coming, going out, the exhalation up to 21. And then that helps to make the mind stable. It helps to stabilize the mind on your focal object. If still at that point, after trying all those methods, your mind is unable to focus, to remain on the focal object, then at that point, you can stop your meditation, get up, go for a walk, walk around. Um, uh, you can read texts that talk about antidotes to excitement, read texts that discuss how to, how to deal with excitement, uh, you know, have water or wash your hands and face. Or, um, and, and, yeah, that's all. Ani Chingwa Sim what Tinikas 
ani hechana shuba kene chimaki wore za tindegi ta gomja ta tindegi cheju sangwena ta ti chiwa ta be chiwa se ta be dan ani goba se ta be chigo yo matlam song kor gomja yo wa ta gomja se mikwa gomja se na se mikwa la pe se ji du neba di yonye ki la ke tini ki to chi ge za kari yo na tini da ngo tu ya ku chiwa tindegi da se mikwa neba la ke tindegi ngo da se mikwa na shaya la ke tindegi ngo da tindegi chuna ka be di che go go neba di ma chuna di che go sun di se ma ta du yo ina ta gomja ji tata kora ngara zo tata 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 to wa chalo as din zo ta din da di na la chingo gi de she dan chingo se dan du du sun se ga du ngu du se di ta ngara zo shi ne du ba la ting zin te mu go wo re ting zin se di la um che ju ni sang wo re wo ta di ne gi ta de she di du su ma tu du wo su wo ta di so so again here what we're looking at is the practice of serenity in the attaining serenity in order to attain serenity, we need to have a practice of samadhi or single pointed concentration, which has to have these two qualities of abiding and the quality of clarity. Uh, so that's where all this explanation about laxity and excitement comes in. Is the mind able, are we able to remain single pointedly on the object or not able to. And that's that's what concentration is about. And the two things that make it so that we are not able to remain single pointedly on object are laxity and excitement. Laxity again is where the uh, object is not appearing clearly in the mind. Excitement is where the mind is distracted outwards towards other objects uh, by by attachment. It's what takes the mind. Uh, it's what is the obstacle to the mind remaining single pointed. So when we have our vigilance here, our meta awareness, um, you know, watching, observing, seeing, what is it looking for? It's looking for. How is my mind in terms of the clarity aspect? Is there something which is uh, being, is, is, is there some obstacle present to that clarity aspect? Is there ob some obstacle present to the single pointed aspect? What do I need to do? What, what do I need to do when these uh, are happening, when these obstacles are happening? And the basic thing we need to do for when the mind is too tight, too excited from excitement, then we need to bring the mind down. When the mind is too lax, too slack with laxity, we need to raise the mind up. Those are the two basic antidotes uh, in, in brief. And so what we need is a type of tension in our concentration, the tension that's just right in between being too slack and between being uh, be, between being too slack and too tight. So we need that kind of that medium degree of tension. <clears throat> so those are the, that that's it with the, the two obstacles to single pointedly abiding and concentration are these two laxity and excitement. And so that's why we spend uh, this time and have these explanations of what they are as well as, and we need to also know what they are, how they function, how they arise, as well as how to deal with them after they have arisen, what are the antidotes to apply? So that's where all this explanation comes in. Oh, Tatan Habardu 
我听到的是我的父母的父母的父母的父母的父母的父母的父母的父母的父母的父母的父母的父母的父母的父母的父母的父母的父母的父母的父母的父母的父母的父母的父母的父母的父母的父母的父母的父母的父母的父母的父母的
difficult it is to understand, to observe within yourself, to identify within yourself. And so that's why it sort of has, even when though both laxity and excitement are obstacles that we need to address and counteract, the laxity has this, um, it's, it's extra, something that we have to be extra cautious about. <clears throat> and and why, again, uh, how is another sign that this is the case is that as was addressed or discussed in the earlier portion of the text, the many meditators have this misunderstanding that the best relaxation is the best meditation. They have this understanding that the mind, um, you know, basically they've confused subtle laxity with good meditation, even though there's still some fault present, people often think that that is uh, the best kind or the correct kind of meditation because it's still remaining on the object, just lacking that vivid intensity. So what is the key point here that you check using the vigilance, using your meta awareness, check up on your meditation, on your mind and see, it doesn't have, does my mind have the aspect of not only clarity, but this vivid intense clarity that has a continuity to it. Again, Genla continues to emphasize this continuity to the clarity. It's like when you have a completely pure, clear sky with nothing impeding it whatsoever, but not just for an instant, but really, you know, it's like just a pure continuity of clarity. So that's what he's getting at. It needs to have this pure continuity without anything obstructing it, without, um, yeah, so it just, it, it continues on. And that's when you are in the proper, correct kind of meditation where subtle laxity is not present. Oh, yeah, that, that, so we have uh, 30 minutes remaining, and so we can do a Q&A session. If there are people with questions, please ask your questions. Can you yeah. give an example um, of when um, lethargy um, makes your body and mind unserviceable? Yes. Okay. Latin lesum with Chachi down, similar lesum with Chani or that Lu lesum Rumasena, Luding another two, some common jaggy, that come back to Nicha, Lu Gitatus, Labanitus, Tabo Nicha, that Lu nom non children, says Gomjai Tapshi children, that the Latin Toname or Lu Tinis in Ted Susula Ram, but that days they were the um chick paper color chick magiva, you non lege in Gorwa. What did you? Lulisunwa, Chick <laughs> Gomjaya 
so for example, if we're trying to, well, we talk about the unserviceability of both body and of mind. And so the unserviceability of body would be, for instance, we're sitting in meditation and we try to have the perfect meditation posture with the seven points where, you know, your legs are in the uh, Vajra posture, your hands are in the right pose, your eyes are, are pointed downwards, your neck is slightly tilted, etc. So while well, your chin is slightly tilted, etc. So all of those uh, things, when you're doing all of that and your body becomes a bit uncomfortable, when your body becomes tight and unpleasant, uncomfortable, then that's the body being unserviceable. If your body is able to sit in that perfect meditation posture, the correct meditation posture with no problem, no discomfort, you feel very pleasant, you feel very light, very good, then that's the body in a serviceable state. So that's serviceability. The, the more broad definition or way of talking about unserviceability is the body or mind um, not being able to be directed towards virtuous objects serviceable body and mind means you're able to direct them towards virtuous objects so again th now thinking about the mind so if you're doing uh, meditation and the mind as it focuses on some virtuous object and you get very uh, tired you get um, you know un uh, what kind of tight or, or tired and you're not happy you get unhappy uh, doing the meditation then that's your mind being unserviceable. If you're able to stay focused on the on the virtuous objects for a long time, staying happy, staying uh, with your mind, staying in a happy state, that's uh, your mind being serviceable. It's able to focus on a virtuous object at will. Thank you. Can Geshe um, describe this causal relationship between the three, the delusion, lethargy, and laxity, I'm not sure I understand how those, one leads to the other. Yeah, and I apologize as a uh, translator, I just kind of mixed up what I was saying there. So, but Genla can help clarify, of course. Genla, Danda, Timu, Mu, but. Because I think Muba Jing was Sungi, Gujay, you remember the good Sugim and do the Gu Dong Jebu Jetsu candidate. The Timu Muba Jing was Sung. Ole Tunjis Nata Diruata Timu Sim Timu City Tan Round and Rangula Roundu Mumba, Grand Mishi Mumba Jura, Tindy Mumbi Chadilla, Timu Sugurwa. ตอบกี้อันนี้มาแล้วตัดจีกันดิเลยพอดีเนี่ยที่ที่มุกิชาร์ตโตเบตินี่มีมันจะอาจจะเกี่ยวเรื่องเล่าว่าชาร์ดู
So the order is, is like this, where we have this delusion and delusion here, it's like this mental process, mental factor where we're not conscious of an object at all. It's like the darkness with where we're not aware of an object at all. And with that as a condition and in dependence upon that, then we have this lethargy that makes our body and mind unfit, unserviceable, and dependence upon that lethargy, then we go to meditate and we naturally have a difficulty having this clear appearance of an object, right? So it's, it's sort of, that's, that's the order there. And when we talk about lethargy having its main cause, the primary cause being delusion, we can also talk about the uh, it's other conditions, these kind of like it's, it's sort of root cause we could talk about, we say is delusion here, we can see is delusion, but then we have other conditional factors that contribute in the immediate um, in, in, in the immediate time of the of the arising of lethargy, such as the um, eating food, uh, an amount of food that isn't appropriate, eating an inappropriate amount of food, sleeping an inappropriate amount, sleeping too long, uh, allowing your mind to simply become too lax, too slack, the mind just sort of being um, too, you know, too, too loose or slack. And so those are all other contributing factors that give rise to lethargy. And again, the lethargy then just as that, so, so the, uh, sorry, laxity here. So the laxity comes because the lethargy is there and dependence upon it. The lethargy comes in dependence upon the delusion and with delusion there as a condition and lethargy can arise. And with lethargy there as a condition, then laxity will arise. So that's the reason, the way that they are cause and effect. Thank you. Kila. Wow. So the question is when we talk about this left, uh, sorry, not laxity here, <laughs> laxity being an obstacle, of course, here we're talking about it pr pr presenting the obstacle to meditation. So the problem with it is that we aren't able to accomplish our meditation, uh, our flawless meditation. Uh, beyond that, outside of meditation, is there any problem with it? Does it have any other faults? <laughs> Gomlatan Senan uh, so if we have laxity coming up in our meditation and we continue to in, persist in the meditation uh, in the sort of forcing ourselves to just sit there, even though we're not able to get rid of the laxity that's present, 
then there's the risk that it will lead to an increase in forgetfulness overall, even outside of meditation, that it will lead to our mind becoming more forgetful, that it will lead to our mindfulness, the quality of our mindfulness degenerating. So that's something to watch out for when you have this lack of a clear appearance of an object, then again, that's the essence of laxity. Uh, then you want to keep your meditations short so that it doesn't have this adverse effect on your mind overall, on your for, increasing your forgetfulness, decreasing your mindfulness. Thank you. Uh, hi, I have a question. Um, Geshe-la was talking about, um, I think about scattering, if I got this right. Uh, scattering where the mind is pulled off um, from the object, you know, for, for other reasons, right? So it's not the same as uh, excitement. So for example, if, um, you know, you've experienced some trauma maybe in your life and when you sit down to meditate, you know, you have very uh, disturbing, um, you know, memories, like flashbacks of, of I'm giving a very um, dramatic example, it doesn't, but anyway, this is a problem that, that many people do actually experience. So uh, what would be, I guess, the, the antidote, the appropriate way to bring the mind back, um, to restore the mind in, in such a case? Thank you. Okay, and just uh, for warning that I am not really so clear on the best Tibetan terms to use for kind of psychology terms, um, but I'll try. My best. Again, la danda ani lagi ching tani so di sungi yore pena michi ki ngama 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 ah kani sa gare da na dunya track track chambo ah dunya shuk chambo chik nyong ah ngama ngama nyong sarin ba ro ani nyong saris ani yang tatung ding sang tatung dering ไอ้คนซอกโฮมแกมนะอันนี้รังชิงกิเจนเชดีงามกินเนโซดีเป็นอาโซโซพามาจิมิมิจิกิโซโซพามาเซอันนั้นรังละจิตะเซนเนียม
Kansa pagi kita ni monde dah mewah suatu mati susu wisem ni monde dah sawadi, ane dah tangsin cinta cintu esa tangsin kita ni ni boleh cewa la tangsin tu besar. Tapi ni dah uji semua tangsin tu kau mesti jaya ke semua di kuih ke tapsi dah uji. Oh, ni dah uji cina. Tapi dia tu kau nang tu kuih ke tapsi je. Lagi mana orang semua kasut kau mesti tang dengan di pasu dengan di pas jadi cione kau mesti ya langsir ke tapsi je kan? Tinggal tu uji cina, ane je kau mesti la. Tesi kasna kalau rejeng yang terusah sejauh rejeng ni berarti tak terasa ya saya ke waktu ni kita jeng yang lama dulu asal tahun yang kau mesti lihat rumah tak jeng yang lama rosak sejauh rumah ni kita semua tu sih tamu dengan kita kurang kita sunang di yang yang tu sih berkawat semua tanah yang kurang dulu na tak dengan di tak di dengan di sembuh tak mesti lama yang asal tak di dengan di malah lewat di jeng sih sembuh tak mesti lama yang asal tak di dengan di sembuh tak mesti lama yang asal Ani sembuh tak sembuh gitu ni, tu dengan tinju mahu guna mahu yang kita pasti niye gitu ni nyawar. Tapi tinju juga kita, kerana dengan di tapa show, seni apa tinju tapa yang jujur itu ni aku macam na, ane biar di sambut di taruh yang jitu kuli, seni di tu jenis ko cahala su sambut di tangga ini na, ane aku macam di kui kita senang di show cembur yang di tes ma, mewah dua la pengi leh sambut ngan ane tinju cengi dos, apa tinju. And as a note, just to explain the question, because I, I don't know the best word to render trauma as, I just said, for example, you see your parents murdered before you, or you get raped, uh, have experienced rape, something. Uh, and so, but the answer is, so when those situations come, there's so many different types of suffering experiences that we can have. And all sentient beings also, all living beings also have many different types of suffering. And so in essence, though Gunnar didn't use this word he, the way he described it, is that we can think about the situation practically, be practical about it. So this uh, suffering happened already. We can think to ourselves, it happened already. There's nothing we can do to overcome it now or stop it, make it, prevent it now. Everyone also experiences sufferings of a similar nature. And uh, when we look at it, these this suffering is a result, a natural result of the afflictions and three poisons, the three poisons and the afflictions. So we can then think about how if we don't, if I don't get rid of these afflictions, that's not okay. I must get rid of these afflictions. And we could also think about all the other beings experiencing or have, who have experienced similar situations and use that to generate compassion towards them, uh, thinking, oh, how wonderful, wouldn't it be a great, it must, um, sorry, wouldn't it be great if all these beings were free of those problems? <clears throat> they must be free of those problems. It must be free of that suffering. And again, thinking that's the nature of having the afflictions, just by mere uh, virtue of having those afflictions, those kinds of sufferings um, arise. And so uh, they have to be eliminated from their very root without eliminating from their, eliminating them by their root, from their root, then there is uh, no chance to overcome the suffering. So that leads us to then inspire ourselves or encourage ourselves to meditate on, to meditate, to do our meditation practice. So we, this is what we call transforming adverse conditions into the path. So we use those adverse conditions to inspire and encourage ourselves to practice. And so then we can, you know, ultimately meditate, use that as encouragement to meditate on selflessness and emptiness, which are, you know, the antidotes that to overcome the root, those afflictions by their root. And so um, I also, again, I'm saying, I also feel, you know, doing this, you know, it gives you, it, it gives you the inspiration to do your meditation practice, but also thinking in this way about these Dharma points uh, can, I, I, I think can help the, um, the, the these types of memories from these types of traumatic memories from even uh, disturbing our practice in the first place and coming up in, in our practice. It can help reduce them. 
你看,那我。你突然就出去了。我那是第一次。呃,第,他当初,呃,有高速车了,他当初第一次有高速的空白的,所以你应该能去,呃,自助,自助的车呢,那么多车了。那么多车了,第,呃,你,那么多车了,那
emptiness here, this meditation of the light, visualization of the light is simply to change the apprehension of the subject, of our mind. And so that we get a sense, okay, the mind is vast, the mind is clear, the mind has a lightness to it. And so uh, it's not, uh, so then the bringing in selflessness is, is not really a, an antidote in this context. Okay, so time has gone and we're going to pause here today. She <laughs> Tamba Guni Toba Jo Kangira Vi Kuvi Shingamansu Pendan Dewa Malu Jumi Chiri Seva Denzin Jazu Shabi Sidi Badu Denjuru Ji Kadin Duji Kamsu Chile Dobju Dabi Rundu Jazu Ji Losa Namla Ringlam Jumi Lambin Jivi Shigi Shabi Jo Changju Sinjo Rundu Ji Maji Bana Ji Okay.